Welcome, everyone. This is episode what now? 35, 37, 380. 35, I think. 35 for sure. I'm pr- pretty sure about that. Wow, we're getting up there. Episode 35 of the Snapcast podcast. Still, really? still younger than I am. <laughs> we are a Magic the Gathering podcast where we talk about magic and magic related things for the competitive magic player with a casual interest in finance. Oh, man. man. You're so good at that now. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. <laughs> we only had like six times to practice last week. I should be good at it at this point. Seriously, it looks like our uh, kilobytes per second are exceptional this evening. So hopefully yeah. you are joining us live on YouTube. Yeah. Sorry if you got like a million notifications last week. So like apparently Brad's router was like not in a good spot. It was having a rough one last week. and uh, It's not the only one. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we all get there. But, uh, yeah, dude, we got some stuff to talk about this week, man. There's, like, card prices, doing some stuff after, uh, you know, after the good old Double Masters coming out. We uh, This will be new to me, too. I'd love to check out some lists of decks post-ban. Yeah, we had. There's definitely been a, a fairly good shakeup from what I've seen and, and heard from other podcasts so i'm excited to look through this deck list yeah yeah so uh although they they banned the uh the cat in standard the the black cat in standard brad did a great job at picking up one recently and i really hope that you guys get to see him on the cast here today her Un, undetermined i don't like to I, I, we're just gonna hope the cat joins us today that's right. <laughs> Honestly, the genitalia of the of the cat in the house doesn't really matter to anyone except no, for the cat. All. Exactly. Exactly. It's just like real life. <laughs> um, I have not played Magic since I saw. Uh, that's not true. I played one game of Commander since I saw you last. No kidding. Yeah. Did you win with your new <laughs> with, with your new Wheel of Fortune? No, no. I was playing against uh, Nick Blanchard and. Dalton and Dan. I can't even remember. Nick was playing this uh, prowess commander. It's a just guy prowess commander. Every time he played an artifact, he like made a token, drew a card. Jesus. And his deck was just like all the zero drop artifacts. He was playing uh, paradoxical outcome. It was basically paradoxical outcome storm. Wow. Wow. Um, that's insane. In Commander, it was it was busted. It was definitely a super competitive deck, and I feel terrible. <laughs> as soon as you said Blanchard, I was like, let me guess, Blanchard won <laughs> through some crazy means. He did. Yep, yep. That's he awesome, did. Man. I did absolutely nothing. But I did, like, whip out my big mana crypt. And, oh, yeah. And, and I played that, and then... It sat there on the board, and I did absolutely nothing with it. <laughs> it so, take three damage every couple of turns. Uh, it bolted me once. Hey, I did okay. so good with those dice rolls. That is solid, man. That's really good. Uh, so last week, we were really getting into it on what the prices on some of these things were going to do. Yeah. Because I, I think I was saying even last week that my my timeline, my horizon for getting the Getting the box topper versions of cards, I think the I think that the best time for the most playable ones is upon us. It oh, might be sure. this week, it might be next week. But we're already hearing rumors that the actual VIP packs themselves are getting harder to come by and the prices are jumping. Yeah. Even Rudy was saying on his channel that like, yeah, you'd be hard pressed to get a VIP pack these days for around a hundred dollars. Now like, I was in Target last weekend. They had them for one twenty-five. In Target? In Target. What? I was in Target because somebody pointed out to me that Jumpstart packs were over there at five dollars a piece, and they're going for like eight online. What? Yeah. Is that was that the case? Did you find some Jumpstart packs for I, five bucks? I did. Oh man. I did. I opened like one decent card. I think the whole stack of them is behind oh, us because yeah. I'm a goddamn junkie. Yep. And I even, it was Jason Clark that was like, yo, I just saw these over at Target. You should go check it out. And so I get over there and I don't remember the last time I went into a Target. I mean, it was probably pre-COVID. Yep. I haven't been in Target since. I've never bought a Magic the Gathering product at Target. No, man. They usually jack their prices up. That's the thing. 
I wasn't surprised when really? you said the VIP. Yeah, I wasn't surprised when you said VIP packs were 125 at Target. Like, they usually, they're known for being more expensive. They're like the more expensive Walmart, in my <sighs> opinion. I know I probably Target. offended some people out there, but oh my gosh, come on now. Listen, yeah. I, I, if we're going to go to Target, I actually have to put real pants on. <laughs> um, but I, I got over there, and I might have been a little bit, uh, I might have been a little bit in a smoky headspace, we'll say. And I'm just like wandering around Target, looking at the walls. Man, I haven't been in here in forever. I wonder where this stuff is. How much are they going to charge for this wall, I wonder? <laughs> and, oh, because I had a second mission. I didn't just go for those packs. I was also getting a Frisbee. Did you guys know how fun playing Frisbee is? I've been playing a lot of Frisbee lately. That's a total aside. <laughs> I run into, I'm standing in the aisle. I've got my earbuds in. And I'm listening to MTG Fast Finance, as a matter of fact, and they're talking about the value of box toppers and when a good time to get them is, strangely enough. And I, I hear through my earbuds and I look up and there's Jason Clark and he's standing in front of me and he's like, oh, I was over here. Then I went next door and then I figured you wouldn't know where they were. So I came back to lead a blind man to water. <laughs> <laughs> and so we walked over there, and there were about eight of the packs left. Wow. So you bought all of them. So I bought all of them. <laughs> <laughs> and a, in a sweet Harry Potter-themed Platform 9 and 3 quarters t-shirt that I wore to my gig on Sunday. Got a Solid. lot of compliments on. Hell Just yeah. saying, maybe I'll rock that on the podcast next week Hell for any yeah. Harry Potter fans. You definitely should, man. That's awesome. And then I had this dilemma. He's like, oh, yeah, those are going for eight, eight bucks a piece easy online right now. And I thought... Well, do I just flip them? Do I put them in one of those buy, sell, roll, raz things and just say 72 bucks? Something, you know, like here's, here's yeah. 70 bucks. I paid 40. I, I'll make 30 bucks just to have gotten them from Target. Yep. And I'm like, man, that sounds like a good idea. That would be great. MTG Finance thinking right there so what did i do yep, I, I gotta crack one of them i gotta to crack see. one of them then you only oh, get that, seven yeah then you're like oh well now it's not worth 72 it's only worth like you know 60 something so i might as well just crack keep cracking another them one. keep cracking them keep oh that wasn't them. a good rare i might as well crack another one yeah, yeah. No, i didn't I win on feel. this lottery ticket let me scratch another oh, one. Oh yeah i had a i had that impulse too i picked up some double masters packs and uh i was like you know what, dude? I should probably stream or record my cracking of these packs. I was thinking about that as I was cracking my first one, and then I was like, "Nah, nah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna crack them." And I was like, "With my luck, no one wants to see it, right?" I'm glad I didn't record it. I will never buy another another double masters pack again. I didn't get, I got jack squat from all of those packs. I think I got like seven of them, and I. I think my best card was like uh, the artifact guy that stops people from casting other artifacts. More than one artifact spell. Really? Ether Sworn Canonist. It was like my best crack. Most valuable. Huh. Uh, yeah, it was like a buck. I'm like, this, this is ridiculous. Yeah, that sounds awful. Yeah. So I don't base your experience on my experience, but uh, some people apparently are cracking some nasty things from these enough to bring the, the price of these VIP packs up to like over a hundred dollars, which is just, it's insane to me. Like I must have the absolute worst luck out of anyone cracking packs. Well, that doesn't surprise me. No, not at oh, all. I did. And I'm, I'm just, I went, so two things just happened. I stood up, to prove to everyone that watches this on YouTube that we do actually wear pants during this podcast. That's good. Uh, and I got my my stack of these Jumpstart boosters. Hey, yo. Oracle of Moldiah. Th that card is still almost... Uh, it was $40 before the reprint and went down to like 25 and is back up to 30 Hmm. And so that pretty much paid for... My excursion. All of the rest of these cards, there's got to be ten dollars in there. Wow. And I did not own an Oracle of Maldaya. So 
Huh. And that's from the Jumpstart. That's from Jumpstart. Yep. Yeah. Wow. I mean, lots of great reprints in that set. So, I mean, I guess you technically made your money back with that one card, but yeah. There you I go. mean, that was cooler than uh, Assault Formation. Yeah, that's so junk. Or uh, Towering Titan. Towering Titan is a 0-0 zero, zero creature, giant, 4 in green, green. Towering Titan enters the battlefield with X plus 1 plus 1 counters, where X is the total toughness of other creatures you control. Sacrifice a creature with Defender. All creatures gain trample until end of turn. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, I feel like it's really cool in a uh, in a Doran deck, but I mean, even then, it's six mana for something that might not even be close to a six six. You never really know. Yeah, you need one of those zero eight walls. Yeah. To really make it worthwhile. Yeah. Ridiculous. But uh, yeah, man. So, what are these cards doing? You just had this. Uh, you just had this site up that was showing some trends for these cards. Now, granted, this is only over a couple of days. We still don't know 100% what they're going to do, but it looks like... It looks you know, like they're starting to level out. Yeah, they're starting to either level out or slightly trend up. At least Stoneforge Mystic is here. Right, so this is the box topper, Stoneforge Mystic. The... Let's see. The gold is the pack. And then... I'm sorry, the gold is the foil. And the white is the non-foil. Ah. And so, from release, highly valued, borderless, $138, one twenty-nine seventy, And for a split second, the borderless foil, or the borderless, it looks like. No, okay. I'm reading this right. Sorry. Yeah. Breaking my brain. Because these are both... Borderless. Yeah. But the borderless foil was worth less. Was worth less. Oh my God. That's ridiculous. And then they, they swapped again. And look at how close they're tracking, though. Wow. That that foil is $3 more. Wow. And that has stayed for a few days. And that they've really tracked together really close. That's insane. That sort of gives some... Cr- I mean, this is one card. We can look at some of the other borderless cards. Yeah. But it gives some credence to the idea that the non-foils are going to have some value, either from scarcity or people... There are people that prefer them. Yeah. Now, the thing that I thought was really interesting was looking at this compared to the pack version. The pack version obviously came out at... Let me scale this all the way back. Look at where this started. Yeah. Slightly above 30 bucks for the for the foil. Look at it now. Slightly below 30 bucks. It has not moved. Yeah, it's so weird, man. It I don't know. It makes me wonder if they're like done leveling out. I mean, it's only been what, a week or two now? Uh, two weeks? Yeah. Uh 18 days. This came out August 2nd. And- yeah. So just about three weeks and uh-huh. August yeah. 1st. So August 1st been almost three weeks. Yeah. So it's, I don't know, man, I feel like that's crazy. That's, that says something right there. Like either like, people are just aren't cracking this, like they're not cracking a lot of these or like, have these leveled out? Like have these bottomed out? I mean, obviously that's... you see a lot of movement in those first couple of weeks. God. Where the, the non-foil, sort of plummeted here Mm -hmm. and then came back out and now they're tracking together. Oh yeah. It's crazy to think, man, that was worth less than $20 at one point. That's so crazy. Right. You could have maybe bought them in that second week. And so we, we're used to, we're used to standard sets that come into print and then exist for a quarter, right. Or something like that. People are drafting them. They're opening them constantly. This had a huge hype cycle. You know what I just realized? Mm. I've been trying to figure out why we look so dark. Ha! Oh, man, don't we look good now? We look so great. Oh, well, I, I, you know, I wish some of our listeners would have said something, <laughs> but maybe we're in a room all by ourselves. Maybe they liked it better when we were on the dark side. You never know. They're like, we don't have to look at your faces as much. That would be so much better. <laughs> um, 
what's another card in this set? Let's let's do another comparison. Force of will. Force of will. Okay. That's the big one. This is this is this is the biggest. This is what all data is based on right here. Force of will. Oh, Double masters. Thing. You want to look at the regular one first? Uh yeah. It doesn't matter to me. It's a uh, really, dude. What? How is this not moved? Well, I mean, it did. Look, it went from two sixty in foil to one seventy. Well, yeah, but like, look at the regular version. <laughs> Has not even. <laughs> Budge like, er, yeah, and yeah. we're back. Oh God, Muller, you better get these, man. I can't believe this is a ninety-nine dollar card right here. Well, and this is why I was not trading the two that I opened. Like, I was not. Well, I mean, one of them's in Necrosar now, but I, my immediate thought was, okay, if I get rid of these, if I pitch these now, I might get some of a box back. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but. It's just that sought after, and I think you're right. Well, one of the things that I've heard, and I actually might have even heard this on that MTG Fast Finance, the people that are cracking this, by and large, are there's two groups. There's the people that are doing it for profit, and the people that are doing it saying, all of these cards are going to my collection. Yeah. So they're not entering the market. Interesting. And the ones that are entering the market are from people that have a financial interest. Like, those are the people that are reselling their cards. Yeah. And you said it, too. Like, in a lot of master sets, people want to get their money back. They're like, okay. We talked about somebody else that we happen to know that was like, okay, if I sell three cards, I can get my VIP booster pack money back. Right. From Brad. <laughs> um, huh. It's, those, those are the only ones that are hitting the market. Yeah. I'm not giving up. The swords that I opened, they're staying in my collection. I'm not giving up the Stoneforge Mystics I opened. They're staying in my collection. Yeah. Yeah. I am. I think I, even if I cracked a fifth Force of Will or a sixth Force of Will in my case from one of these packs, I would probably still not trade it. Like, I would be like, yeah, okay, I'm just going to hold on to it. If it goes down, it goes down. But, yeah. Like, it's, it, it's, it's a Force and of Will. And especially if you're watching it and you're like, the price hasn't moved. Right. Maybe the price will go up. Right. Like, yeah, if you're if you're someone that, like, cracks some of these packs and you don't really need to get your money back off of them, why would you? Why would you sell or trade them? All like, right. You know? Well, let's look at the borderless. We'll, we'll open it up in the borderless window. Oh, man. Uh, Force of William. Borderless double masters. Interesting. Interesting. Good old pump and dump going on there. Look at that. So they came out hot. Yep. Started to climb a little bit. $300 and $439. You're freaking kidding me, dude. 478 and 273 Last week, this was like a $275 card. Last week. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, like it was maybe it was two weeks ago, but like. Either way, no, it's it just about last week. This was like below three hundred dollars. Oh yeah, yeah, two seventy three, right there. Yeah, yeah. So August for 10th. the non foil borderless, and then whoop 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 whoop. Damn. Now I see something here. It looks like in the last couple of days it's dropped off. It's a pump and dump right there. People pumping it up. You see, that's 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 what that pattern is indicative of. In the stock market, that would be called a pump and dump. It's where it's where the price of it quickly goes up and then sharply goes down, and you know so they because somebody drove the price up right they pump up artificially the stock. Like, oh, and this, then... this business is going crazy it's going to be the next big thing and they know the stock is like you know not <laughs> worth that much and then it's they actually sell junk it. stock yeah exactly <sighs> weird well, weird weird so this will be one that I'll be interested to follow like can it keep holding. A plus or approximate four hundred dollar price. Well, we got to check out Mana Crypt, dude. Okay, we got to check I'm, that out. I'm totally in. Let's. I mean, let's you look cracked, at the regular first. No, you cracked the borderless. You have to check out the borderless first. <sighs> you you cracked it. You have a vested interest in this card. I do, but I don't think I'm gonna like it. <laughs> Actually, I shouldn't say that. I think this card is also going up, but maybe I'm wrong. Foil. It has leveled out. 
So it started wicked high. Mm-hmm. The foil peaked for a second. Wow. But, I mean, even according to this, the foil is 235, 234. And it's been level for the better part of a week, roughly. Yep. Huh. That's that's the thing. You would think in these first three weeks would be peak supply. Yeah. Maybe, maybe with everything going on and, like, you know, people losing their jobs and not having as much money. Only the people that were pretty well off are buying these and they don't care about selling them. You know what I mean? That could also just now, be a thing. Check out the regular box version. What? This is so <laughs> odd. Uh, so it, it hit bottom according to this. I mean, obviously we're, we're still only looking at so much data, but it, it tanked in the first week. Eight days out from release. And has crept up a little bit since then. But look at that foil. Wow. That hit that same bottom at the same time. So because those two are tracking at the same time, I really think that is showing that that's when peak supply was. You know, if if one bottomed out and the other one didn't, you would think that's because more people had opened. It just happened to be that more were opened. Right. Of one or the other. But when they're both doing that, I mean, part of, part of it can certainly be psychology. Yeah. People are saying, oh, I'm not going to buy it at this price or. Right. I wonder if like, are, are these legit? Like, what if we went on eBay and we try, we wanted to buy a card like this? Be like, we want to buy just a regular borderless, not foil, but borderless like card. I wonder what people are actually selling them for. Well, let's look. So now we're looking at TCG player. Yep. They have a market of 158 and a foil of 200 for that borderless. Yep. Look back over here. That's the regular one. Okay. What are they saying? They're saying 234 and 170. Yep. So. 158. I mean, it's close. It's close. Let's look at the actual sale prices. 152, 150. Yeah. On the first page, we're up to 165. Yeah. So I can see where the other yeah. side is saying, you know, maybe yeah. 170 is. That's a, pretty good data, man. Let's look at the foil. 200. 200. Wow. Wow. That's so cool, man. How about eBay? You suggested eBay. Yeah, dude. I'm a big eBay fan. What are these what are these people selling there? Mana Crypt Border Lays. Two hundred two oh five. Actual bids up to one fifty two. Four better. days left. Yeah. Yeah. Here's another one. You know, two hundred. Two hundred. One eighty. That's one eighty for non foil. Right. Jesus <laughs> Christ, dude. 160 non-foil. Yeah, people are actually bidding on them at that high. Wow, man, people are actually paying real money for it. That's the thing. Yep. I got seven people bidding there, and the bids are up to 190 just about on some of these. Wow, yeah, that's legit, dude. That's legit. I like that site. I like it. Vetted against vetted against the internet. Real world. Yep. Um, Once again, glad I didn't uh, have any untoward tabs open. Yeah. <laughs> Don't want people seeing what you're really up to. That's right. <laughs> Don't want people to see that I get all of my MTG finance information from Saffron Olive. <laughs> yeah, man, this is this is really good though. So yeah, I mean, it's hard to it's hard to say, man. It's it's still early. It's three weeks after the set came out, but I think data would suggest at this point that prices Some of these are cards. going up. Well, like, prices are, are stabilizing or going up right. on the most playable cards. True. So, another one. Check uh, out. Hey, check this one out. Sword of Feast and Famine. Check out my, my uh, Ether Swarm Canonist. <laughs> oh, look at that. What? Oh, that's stupid. So, this one here, again, tanked a week after release. Hit bottom. Wow. And it's, wow, eighty three bucks at bottom. Eighty three bucks for the non foil. For the non foil. Wow. 
Look They're at this saying, one, though. This is so weird. Like, the the non-foil one keeps popping up above, like, the... <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's so weird. That's so weird. Again, for the non-foil borderless, yeah, what, what has the me? regular pack version done? What strikes me as awfully weird with a lot of these is that that, with the exception of, like, Force of Will and Mana Crypt... Dude. Look at these. Like, the, the foiled and non-foil prices are staying so close for, like, a good portion of this. Like, what is going on? They're at least leveling out, right? Because now they're splitting up. Like, these prices are kind of splitting away. So people are really noticing, like, okay, this is definitely worth this. Like, back on August 10th, and no one friggin' knew anything. They were like, ah, get rid of it. Get rid of it at 50 bucks. <laughs> Whether it's foil or not, pitch it. And now it's like, okay, they, they kind of they're gaining an understanding of what people are going to pay. What was the card you said you opened? Ether Sworn Canonist. <laughs> hey, look at that. <laughs> uh, yeah, they bottomed out. I mean, it looks like it might still be trending down in the non foil. Wow. Here's, here's We're trying a to read something out of this. I mean, but to look, at, that's a pretty steady price for the last two weeks. Yeah. Here's a question. What did the regular price of, like, the regular Ether Sworn Canonist do? Oh, from the original printing? Yeah. Like, this is our, or even just the most recent one besides Double Masters. Uh, this is the control looks like part it hasn't been printed since Shards of Alara. No, Modern Masters printed it. Oh, there it is, Modern yeah. Masters. Sorry, I'm, I was seeing Double, Double Masters. Seeing that Double. Double double. So it's it stayed level at about twenty dollar foil there. So right now we're looking at September of twenty nineteen. Yep. To now. So if we were to look at the current time frame. Down, down, down. Down, down, down. But it's still like six dollars and fifty cents. It's so odd. This is so odd. It has done nothing to that price. What it, this is so odd. Like, it hasn't done anything to the original price of it, but, like, okay, why would you buy this version over the Double Masters version? Like, I don't get it. If you're going to spend more for a card, buy you got, and especially one that doesn't have that little, like, hologram on it, buy right. the original set. Like, why is this worth $6.50? Well, and so and we the didn't look at two? that. What's the, what is the actual shards going for? Same damn It's going thing. for less. What? This doesn't make any sense to me. The market is in disarray. I'm saying it. This... Well, the world and is that messed with true. everybody's brain right like now. Like you have said, we are in the new drinking game is whenever you hear somebody say unprecedented, <laughs> take a drink. Uh, we are in unprecedented times. Whenever you hear somebody say new normal, take a drink. All right. Uh, please join us. Yeah, this just strikes me as so weird, though. Like, I, I don't even know what to make of this. What do you what do you guys suggest? Like, what what do you think is going on here? You have cards that, I mean, we literally looked at basically what I would consider a worthless card. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, it, like, like, well, it also goes to show you that even the worthless cards in Jumpstart are worth a $5 pill. <laughs> Jumpstart and friggin' 2X Masters. But, you know what I mean, though? Like, we, I just kind of threw that in there to, to be trolly and to see, like, you know, what a worthless card would be doing. Yeah. But, like, it's doing the same thing. Like, these worthless cards are doing the same thing. They have, like, the same pattern going on. Now, one of the things that I th I, I really like, and we'll jump back over to that, is you can look at the whole set by movement, by mid-low, by rarity, whatever. You can sort any way you want. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that I had fun with earlier today was just looking at this set and saying, okay, what's moving in price negatively? What's moving in price positively? Buried Ruin is dropping in price, is one of the most substantial drops in price. Wow. Core Tapper, my boy. He's yep. going down too. I know. He's, that used he's to be dropping like the a, most. That used to be like a $5 foil, man. I was so pumped with my foil Core Tapper, and now I can get a foil for $0.60. I'm Ain't getting all... You guys get foil Core Tappers? I'll buy them. Do y'all have foil Ancient Stirrings? <laughs> wow, what? It's a $0.62 cent card. Foiled ancient stirrings. Most broken card in modern, right? Most broken card. <laughs> Let's hold on. <laughs> Let's slow down. Uh, Ash Barons. This was a stupid, this was a $10 card for a while. Yeah. 
basic land cycling when it was only printed in that one commander deck. This right. was a $10 card. Now they've driven it into the ground. But it's worth getting your foils. I mean, you could put together a, a $20 cart probably on TCG Player. Get yourself a play set of foil ash barons, a fo- set of foil thrag tests, a set of foil welding jars, a set of foil ancient stirrings. And don't forget the foil core tappers. Uh, Those are sweet. The expedition maps. Pack foils. What? They're like a buck. buck yeah. Ten, what? Wow. And looking at how that price. So that is that is still, I would say that that's still overall trending down. Mm-hmm. Well, granted, a lot of these are commons and uncommons. Right. So, like, I mean, that's kind of to be expected. That's not what all the hype's about in these. But high market, that's a big one. That used to be worth something. That's a rare. Yeah. I mean. Wow, down 30%. So, th- so those are those are ones that are still showing dropping prices. Then I'm just going to scroll through. There's quite a lot in the set that is dropping in price. Sort of war and peace. The drop, that was, like, one of the... Yeah, yeah, but now we're into like the one or two percent drops. So that doesn't yeah. even matter, dude. Like one or two percent, who cares? Yeah, exploration. Mm. Oh god, that's so beautiful. Yeah, it is, dude. Uh, wow, fifty bucks for a foil. Right. Look at look at its price graph here. Wow. Yeah, it's down one or two percent, but yeah, I don't think it's gonna be. I don't think we're gonna get them for twenty bucks. Oh hell no, no. Nope. God, that's cool, man. Now let's look at what's growing in price and be surprised at how many damn cards are actually going up in price. Force of Will Borderless, as we saw. Dude, what the hell is this? Blood Spore Thrinax is the biggest increase? The biggest gainer? Are you kidding me? I cracked one of these. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't see it here. I don't see it here. No, this is a... This is worthless. Yeah, worthless card. I saw that and was just like, I put it in the junk rare pile because oh. I'm like, I don't know what it's worth, but I'm not even going to look it up. Wait, that disappeared. What happened? Oh, oh I, you... I reset the page. Okay. Yeah. I was like, I mean, <laughs> so 83% jump to 49 cents. Yeah. Let's, maybe somebody actually sold one <laughs> and that's why it's showing up. Yeah. So um, I'm sorry. I wasn't looking at the actual prices of these cards, but it's sort of feast and famine has gone up quite a bit over the borderless. Yeah. 16%. And then we have the one below that went up. Fire and Fire ice. ice. Yep. We saw Monolith. Uh, oh, this is good timing, actually. Well, no. Let's let's see. There's another card on here that I wonder if I'm going to find on here. But Basalt Monolith. We talked about it in previous weeks. First time it's ever been printed in foil. Get the damn foil. Hell yeah, look at that beautiful thing. It is. Look at that beautiful I mean, thing. When are they going to reprint it again? When Probably. are they going to reprint it again in foil? If if they throw a basalt monolith in another commander precon, it's not going to be foil. True. And it's uh I mean, it's definitely a useful card. I mean, they were it gained a lot of hype when uh when the companions came out. You know, because of the the infinite combo, but uh still it's just even without that, it's just a really good card. Yeah. Uh, Sword of the Meek going up in price. You're kidding me, dude. Doubling season going up in price. Yeah, but Sword of the Meek foils used to be worth like 40 bucks, and now you can oh, get yeah. it for five bucks. So yeah. they are going up, but overall, I think they went down pretty significantly. Dark Confidant, go back up to that real quick. Dark Confidant, you can get this guy for 40 bucks now. Foil. Look at, look at how close the regular and foil prices are. That is ridiculous. They're a difference of $5. Oh my god, that just seems so odd to well, me. This this looks more like a ten dollar difference, but yeah, that's that seems. But like even still, I mean, I guess that's a twenty five percent increase at at that point. Or thirty three, thirty three. Yep, because we want. Yeah, yeah, but still, still though, man, that it just seems so weird. Like, and so you, again, you can track them both. Yeah, I mean, if I'm looking at this data and being objective, mm-hmm. I'm telling you. This market is nuts right now. It's, like, right, it doesn't make normal. any damn sense. Like, the set just got reprinted, and things seem to be leveling off at three weeks. And Well, nobody's drafting. Yeah. I mean, or I should say, most most people are not drafting. Chase, up. Trending up. You get a foil for 67 bucks right now, dude. My goodness. 
Is it is that right? Look at that. Because foil is 67 and regular is 65. No, that ain't right. There's no way that's right. Oh my god, dude. Well, and look at that foil price just down, 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 down. Wow. Last week leveled out. Does this make sense to anybody watching this? There's like, are Jace, you seeing this? The mind like, uh, as I expected that. You get a foil Jace for like 65 bucks. You get a regular one for 60. What are you gonna get? Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of which, how much is a Lorowin? I'm gonna leave this for Thoughtseize. Oh yeah, checking out the uh, the original printing. God damn! See now everybody gets to see Brad's terrible typing. I before E except there you go. I no, because there right. has to be a T in there. Do, do, do. See, I don't even have to type it, and it was E I. Nope. Thank you very much. <laughs> we were talking English smack makes about no that. Sense. We were talking smack about that art. Dalton pointed out that art did exist already. But it was on the invocation. Uh-huh. So now, now it's on, that's the one that's on Arena now. Oh, no that kidding. Art. But, Lorwin regular, $38. Hmm. The Iconic Masters of the same art, $18. And the other ones, another one of the same art, $15. $15. So but the Theros now, ones are actually going to be like the most rare art here real soon. The right. Theros ones. I think that was the coolest art, if you ask me. You think so? Oh, yeah, dude. I loved that. It made more sense. The art made sense. You had a guy that's like losing his mind. He's like, no. This thing, You got a fairy in the other one picking at a leaf or something? Or, you know, he's in an ear. I don't know. How much do you think this? Oh, damn it. <laughs> you can't cover it up now. So these are selling around $43, $45. Is that for the borderless one? That's for the borderless foil. Wow. And so you could get a borderless foil, or you could get an original or printing or for you about get the same Or you could get a Laura Art. Uh, Andy pointed this out to me. Tech 4. He was like, hey, dude, I don't know what you, if you're thinking about picking anything up extra from this set, but I, this is the regular price. You know, this is when he sent it to me, I think they were just about the same price because this one wow. has been trending a little bit up. This one has cool art and uh, cool flavor text. So in this one, he's literally the fairy is stealing a piece of the mind. There you go, dude. The mind is a fragile thing. Remove the smallest fragment and the whole thing starts to fall apart. I love that, dude. I love that. So. It just seems like that flavor text should have been on Thought Seas all along. mm, It does. Like, that seems like the right. Yeah. Yeah, I do like that fairy art a lot better. It makes more sense. The other one could have been, like, easily demonic tutor. You know what I mean? You have this little... (laughs) And so, so whispering something. Like I, I think I was trying to say this last week. If there are promo versions of these cards, I don't know that they're going to be a whole lot cheaper two weeks from now. Yeah. As a matter of fact, if people really have blown their wad on this stuff and it's all been opened, and we don't know if or when we're going to get a second wave of it, and if we do get another wave, we don't know if it's going to be the same size as what came out in the first first wave mm. or if it's going to be less or if they're going to cost $50 more a pack. We haven't even sort of explored that, right? That line of thinking. There's not going to be a whole lot more of these coming out. Yeah. God, that's so weird, man. I would say in conclusion about this topic, shit's crazy right now. Shit is crazy. Yo, it just Chick unprecedented. Crazy, never before seen. What was the other one? World changing. <laughs> It's uh, in the before times. Uh. <laughs> it's nuts, man. Like I, I would have never thought we'd start seeing these like leveling out even after, after three weeks and especially going up in a lot of these cases, this just is weird. I don't even know what I would do like with these cars. You know what I mean? Would I buy these? Would I not like, I'm scared. I'm scared right now. Shit's in chaos and I'm scared. Do you, uh, yeah. Hold me. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you know what else I'm wondering though? What? Who's playing what? Who's playing what, man? What are what are deck lists looking like after this ban? So we lost some cards in standard. Did we lose any other significant ones in any other formats? 
<laughs> I'm going to pretend <laughs> that was intentional. Uh, Me too. Yes, Pioneer <laughs> may have may have had some substantial No, I mean, changes. I, I meant good, like good formats. Oh, good <laughs> formats people play? <laughs> Not really. Oh, wait, nobody plays anything except for Historic, because Standard apparently still sucks, because you're still playing against Uro and Nyssa. You're still playing against Blue Green, even once they took out Teferi. Yeah. Now it's just straight Simic Ramp. No, nah, I mean, but even Pioneer. I mean, I I, what do you I want talk to shit, at? but uh, you know, I, I'd be interested to see what people are playing. I I don't I don't mean to talk shit about a whole format, dude. I I like Magic in general, like, and if this format becomes something that is very diverse and interesting, I might check this out. Look at this though, dude. So last two months in that metagame breakdown, can you break that down even further? Like last two weeks, can you do that? Is that possible? Two weeks, bam! Look at that. Wow, Spirit Aggro just taking over the format now. They made the the format less healthy by doing this. No, they didn't. What? Because Spirits is a good deck. It's because a less every, healthy format. Everybody's playing Spirits. Well, not everybody's playing size. Spirit. Twice as many people are playing Niv Mizzet. Niv Mizzet Reborn. We got two decks. I mean, almost as many people are playing Winota as they are Spirits. That's true. That is and true. And what's on the rise? Golgari Aggro. Red Deck Wins. Gruel Aggro. Salt Eye Control. Blue White Control. Esper Control. It is a small sample size, though. I will say that. So you can seventy three decks. Yeah, but like yeah. it's it's amazing to see what some people have flocked to. Niv Mizzet Reborn. Why? Like oh, how man. is? Yeah, Spirit Aggro. Oh, look at this. We got both of them in the same same turnout right here. Because we have Uro. Yep. I mean that's that's why, right? Like Uro is just good. Well, Niv Mizzet lets you draw a crap load of cards, so you've got. Tulsimir you can get, you can get Uros, Voices. Wow. And then this is this is basically just a control deck. This is, GB would be playing this deck. Oh, I can see it. Niv-Mizzet Reborn is such a cool card. Can we look at that real quick? Yeah. This is a two, three dollar card. Yeah. All right, I got to point this out. Okay, we got to talk about this card. So, I never really thought about this much. I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. But now looking at what people flocked to in Pioneer mm -hmm. and looking at the absolute value on this card. <laughs> think about this, man. This says draw 10 cards, right? Am I right? Draw reveal, 10 cards. Reveal 10 cards. Yeah, yeah okay. Reveal but 10 cards. For each color pair, choose a card. Yeah. So basically, it if you're looking at the absolute worst way that it could be abused, that could say draw 10 cards. Oh, yeah. That could technically say draw 10 cards right there. Yeah. So you could you could get up to ten cards in your hand when this thing comes into Waldemar's play. Waldemar's been playing this in modern, dude. It's so good. And it, so think about it this way too. You, this is a control deck in Pioneer, right? You said yep. you know there's there's a bunch of control, there's a bunch of removal. So what are the things that control wants to do, right? They want to stop what you're doing. They want to stock up their hand and they want to have a threat on the board. This does everything. This one mm -hmm. card does everything. It gets a six six on the board, flying. A 6-6 six, six evasive creature for five mana. And we'll close out the game quick and reload your hand full of removal. Like, it's over. Like When this hits, right, it's over. I mean, what are you going to do? Especially if they have a couple mana open, too. Oh, and yeah. They, and they slam a Niv-Mizzet Reborn. They get, like, how do you come back from that? Like, uh, that's... I mean, look at this. They have a bunch of stuff to just stop you in your tracks, dude. Like, Utter End, Abrupt Decay... Do they have counter magic in here too? Oh, I, that's the one thing I don't see in here is yeah. any kind of counter magic, which is interesting. Maybe they don't need it in the new format. Like you don't necessarily need to counter a lot of stuff. You can just respond to what's on the board to stop combos or, or what have you. That guy is so good. That is so good, dude. Oh baby. So I, you know what? I figured it out right here on stream. The card that I'm suggesting this week is to snap this up. Niv Mizzet Reborn. Nice. It's like all over Pioneer right now. People flock to it. It's a $3 mythic card. Yeah. No one's thinking about it right now. It's all about double masters. It's all about, you know, what do I crack here? Dude, look at this. It's a three between three and four bucks you can get this card. Let's uh let's give that the old Yep. Echo MTG treatment. Oh man. Yeah, I'm really curious to see. I always thought this was way more expensive. 
I always thought this was like a ten dollar card. Because it was. Because it was for a while. It was. It was closer to ten for a while. Yeah. Well, and and look at the look at so we were looking at how closely tracking the foil and non foil prices were for so many. Yeah. Look at how far apart these have always been. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, that's I mean, a really three dollars to fifteen dollars, and, and it's the, and it's been consistent still. Yeah. And look at this. It's like the lowest it's been in a very long time right now. Yeah, I'm getting some of these. I'm getting some of these. Yeah. I might, I might get four of them right now. <laughs> I might get four of them right now. Let's go back. Let's look at and see what else was in this particular event. All right. Blue White Spirits, which you wanted to complain about. <laughs> um, that's so good. So many, so many lords. Uh, Doofer was asking me, hey, you got some of these Watcher of the Spheres? I'm like, What? Watcher, the spheres creature spells with flying you cast cost one less to cast. Two two for two flying cod. Yeah, it's already met. It's it's two two for two. Yep. It makes everything else in your deck cost one less. Yep. Uh it gets a temporary bump when you add another flyer. Wow. And you've got Lords for Days. That's insane. Yeah, four Niv Mizzets right here. Oh no, they're foreign. Damn it, I don't want foreign cards. As I say, it was eleven ninety nine to get four of them. D- Please, loyal listeners, don't feel like we're wasting your time while <laughs> Mike goes on eBay to, <laughs> to buy four copies. That's that's this is a preliminary. Let's come back. Let's look at this league. Jund Sacrifice in Pioneer. Oh baby. This deck looks like fun. Oh wow. Got the cat combo in it and everything? Nope. No? No, but it is running Mayhem Devil, Woe Strider, and Priest of the Forgotten Gods. <laughs> what? Modern state or pioneer staples, I guess I'll say. Uh Bolus Citadel. Oh wow, yeah, the finisher, dude. The finisher. Well this looks just like the standard deck that, you know, now it has collected company. So you get well, you get a bunch of blister pods out there and catacomb sifters and making Eldrazi Scion tokens. And you happen to have a mayhem devil out there, and then you sack everything on the board to this. Mayhem devil deals ten. This deals ten. It's over. It's over. Wow. And and if you're in a spot where you can resolve this and just play the whole top of your deck. Yeah, I mean that's not a bad card to rip into right there. Even if you're just like, yeah, your components con- your opponent's controlling the hell out of you, and you're just like, yeah, Bolas is it all. One drop, two drop, two drop, one drop. Slam them out, dude. Oh, my God. This is stupid. Yeah. So that looks like hella fun. Yep. I like it. And look at that. It runs four Thoughtseize, too. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. Four Thoughtseize. In the board, of course. But, like, the fact that it's a four of in the board is just like, okay, yeah, I can swap out and start messing with your hand, too. Yeah. Fatal push. Distended mind, but I love this card. Oh, dude, I love it, too. 50-cent card. Oh, yeah. Emerge. Uh, underappreciated mechanic. Agreed. I'm going to take a big card out of your hand and a small card out of your hand, and I'm going to have a 5-5 five, five for 7. And I'm going to sack a bunch of shit while I'm doing it, so my Mayhem Devil smashes you for a ton of damage. Yeah. And, yeah. Dude, wow. Distendi Mind Bendy. <laughs> so, in this, in, this sta- in this Pioneer League, it almost looks like the point of pioneer has been realized. Like I'm reading Jun Sacrifice, Jeskai Fires of Invention, Boros Aggro, Red Deck Wins, Blue Eye Control, Boros Aggro, Demir Midrange, and Humans. That's pretty diverse. That's pretty diverse. And it almost looks like a who's who of recent good standard decks. Yes. I so, I, I see where you're going with that. So it's it's sort of living up to that post standard Keep your cards and play them in yeah. Pioneer. Of course, I got. I haven't seen this humans list, so I got to look at this. Dude, I've been a big fan of Jun Sacrifice ever since I saw it in Standard, though. God, it's I so know. good. It's so I cool, know. man. Like, it just hits you on so many levels. It's so cool. Oh, baby. Wow. Rogue Refiner? What is this? Wait, what is it? <laughs> this is humans. It came in eighth place in this Pioneer League. Holy. 
Rogue, what, what is Rogue Refiner? Is that the... That's uh, the three, two for three that when it enters, you draw a card and get two energy. What? Why is this Why is this card good? Do we, Are we doing something with this energy? No, although you probably could play the, the Aether Hubs. Oh, yeah. But it's a three, two for three that draws a card. Yeah. That's... Cantrips. And, and if that's... If... If a format has this card in it, it's it, pretty good. It's pretty good format, dude. Like that is cool. I don't see anything that's like too unaffordable here either, really. No, this whole deck seems pretty reasonable. Mana confluence, maybe that's about it. Yeah, that's overpriced right now. Yeah, I mean, way overpriced. Uh, underprinted. How's that? I don't think that it's overpriced. It's probably at the right price for a one the, printing that it yeah. got in a set that like now is kind of becoming an old set. You know what I mean? Oh, I was talking with somebody about the thought seizes today, and then that that comparing the price to the original Laura when regular pack copy. He's like, "Well, that was what like ten years ago." And we looked it up; it was thirteen years ago. Wow, it was two thousand seven. Wow. Yeah, wow. that was a minute. I mean, and so when was Theros? Eight years ago. I would say probably yeah six six. Seven years ago. Yeah, it's approaching that either way. Yeah. Uh, but this looks like fun as hell because this is this is listed as humans. It is a collected company hero of precinct one deck. Dude, this guy. Wow. Yeah, why not? Like, why not? Well, right, because General Kudro's multicolor, General Enforcer's multicolor, Reflector Mage, Rogue Refiner, Shauna, they're all multicolored. Wow. And then that's a lord. Wow. That's just the best white one drop in Pioneer, <laughs> um, sadly. White one drop human. White one drop human. I don't think there is a better. I don't think so either. Thraven Inspector was pretty good even when it was in standard. Like it was used in a lot of, uh, in a lot of decks. It's a lot of value. It's, I mean, it's a one two for one. Right. And it's a later on draws you a card. Yeah, devoted hero that draws you a card. That was my favorite card ever. My first magic pack that I Devoted cracked. Devoted hero. Yeah. Devoted hero, dude. It was it was in those portal booster packs. Do you guys remember these? They sent them out in the mail. They sent them out in the mail if you were like subscribed to cer certain magazines that were really trying to promote magic back in the day with portal. And that was the first pack that I ever got. It was like this mailed, like through the mail, portal one booster pack. And I think I cracked a Sylvan Tutor from it. And I had a. And you were excited about the other card. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I take that back. I don't know exactly the rare. I can't say that because I don't know for sure. But like, Devoted Hero, I definitely oh. remember I got from the pack and I was so. I was like, this card's cool. We don't need Devoted Hero. Look at this spicy list, dude. Who? Is this another humans? Well, no. no, this isn't humans. This is a Demir mid range. Hmm, it's got the it's got Thief of Sanity. I love it already. Uh yeah, it's got Tassiger, Thief of Sanity, Murder Shard, it's got Kalidas, Glint Sleeve Siphoner. Dude, the this, the mini Bob is back. You know what? And the, it has menace. It can get in there. It can get in there far better than Bob can. Well, and but it can't draw as good as Bob can. It can't draw as good as Bob, but if you're running two collective brutality, three drown in the lock, four fatal push. And then six discard spells. It might not be a problem. Oh, right. and three murderous rider. Like the the likelihood that your opponent's gonna have two blockers. <laughs> I don't know, man. That's that's awesome. If you go wow. turn two glint sleeve siphoner, turn three removal spell swing. Gifted Etherborns too. God, I like this that is guy. Sweet. This that, is oh, this dude, is just spicy as hell. A two, three for two. Yep. With death, touch, and lifelink. Like, two nasty abilities. So it's evasive, and it gains you life. That's stupid, dude. Two mana. Yeah. yeah it's and it's just like, I'm just going to sit back and not let you attack me with anything right. ever. No one's attacking into that with something decent. Like, not this, at all. this looks fun as hell. Yep. So this is this is my takeaway. All right, let's look at this Just Guy Fires list. God, I hate Fires of Invention. <laughs> it's a Yorion deck. Wow. Yep. The, the sole surviving companion, Yorion. Uh, Shark Typhoon, a multi-format staple. Teferi Time Raveler, because it's the only place in the world you can play it. You can play it modern. 
Yep. I was going to say uh, again. Best format in the world. Best format in the world. Let's look at some modern lists before we, before oh, we call yeah. it out. Hell yeah. Let's just see what's going on here. Let's look at the most recent modern league. Band control. Bent Yorion. Eight racks. Aura hexproof. Hate bear. Kinnon. What is hate bear? I'm intrigued. It's bad. Kinnon is crazy. Yeah, we got to check that out after. Yeah. I mean, hate bear is hate bear. Like this, this is been okay. So, but this is this is this is not just like this isn't just Eldrazi and taxes, and this isn't just hate bears. I mean, we've got four reality smashers. God, makes my big toe shoot up in my boot. <laughs> four thought not seer, four Eldrazi displacer. So this is splashing green. Oh, I see. Two Knight of Autumn in the main, Gaddock Teague in the board. I'm like, why is this not mono white? Yeah, Knight of Autumn is so good. Night of Autumn is really good when you can blink it with Eldrazi Displacer. Oh my god, yeah, it is. Wow, that's that's nuts. Eldrazi Displacers, by the way, was I right at buying these at 50 cents? What are they now? Oh, obviously. Oh, oh, I feel pretty good about it. Yeah. Yep, I feel pretty good about um, it. I mean, I want to know where the containment priests are, but that's just me. Yeah, that's awfully weird. Are they, they're not in the board. They're not in the board. They're not in the deck at all. Apparently, blinking your opponent's creatures to make them disappear is not as cool as I thought it would be. No. <sighs> wow. So sad. All right, what was the other list? Kinnon. Yeah, yeah we got to see this. Bonder Kinnon Prodigy. Emery. Emery is still a dude. He's still in modern. Yep, so this is what has come out of the... Oh, who is the dude that just got banned? Um, Mox Opal. <laughs> yeah, not my. I mean, this is the, the the guy that made Mox Amber playable that lets you play legends out of the yard. Oh, uh, Hogak? No, not Hog. Uh, friggin'. He looks like Sram. Like I'm picturing the yard on the card, and it makes me think of Sram. Yeah, I don't know, but uh, dude, so Kinnon, for those of you who don't know, is the the green blue guy. Whenever you tap a non-land permanent for mana, add one mana of any type that permanent produced. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so and this then, this deck is all crap that makes mana. Yep. And it has Mox Ambers in it, dude. God, Mox, this is sweet. Mox Ambers because Emery's legendary, Kennen's legendary. Mox Amber helps pay for Emery before he she comes out, right? No. Yeah, am I thinking of the right one? Uh, it re- yes, it reduces the cost yeah. by, by, by one artifact. Yep. Yeah. Yep, so you can go land, land, Mox, Amber, Emery, tap one blue for nothing in this deck. I mean, I guess you could use that one blue for Aether Spellbomb. Well, it just makes it so that your mana is super efficient on turn two. Yeah. It's super efficient. I mean, you could also just Mishra's, yeah, you could do it. You could go Mishra's Bobble, Mox, Amber, Emery for one. Yeah. And then from there, you could cast a noble hierarch. No. You could technically. Well, yeah, if you had you, a breeding pool in play. N- uh, no, you cast it off your Mox Amber. Uh, no, 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 because no, it's blue. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, but you could cast, uh, you could technically. Yeah, you could kind of explode because if you had more Mox Ambers, you could just dump more stuff out. You could use them like the the, the Lotus Petals, Petals like people used to do with Mox just Opal. Pop it, pop it, pop it. <gasps> Sick. So there is some fun stuff happening, and this is all in modern. Wow. In fact, top eight at eight racks. I got smashed by eight rack in the last tournament I was at. It was embarrassing, but cool at the same time. So uh, the last thing that I want to leave you guys on, and this it might also be my snap this up this week. This is the the most well-packed $20 worth of magic cards <laughs> I've ever had shipped to me. So I am giving credit to, and I don't do this like you guys know, I always go to TCG player. I'm, I'm a simpleton. This was miniature market. Uh, they packed these lovely. Oh, it wasn't even. It's $15 worth of cards. In a, in a hard box, in that box we have Packing peanuts. Wow. And on other side, the packing peanuts are on the other side of That's beautiful. two pieces of cardboard inside of a plastic bag and inside of that. Now, what do you think is in here? Do you think this is a mana crypt? 
I already I just said it was fifteen bucks. I mean, do you think it's a fifteen dollar bill? I'm pretty what? sure Rudy shipped my black lotus back in worse than that. <laughs> we we now have a nice little sandwich. Oh, now these are not in the sleeves in between the cardboard. Okay, points taken off. Oh man. But these are perfectly flat. That's a cool card. Pick of the week for Brad. That is a greater good in case that's getting reviewed in the uh, viewed in the reverse for you guys. Foil uh, greater good. Yeah, and I paid fifteen dollars for three of them. Dude, not bad, man. Not bad. Yeah, I like that card. I think it's really cool. You have been listening to the Snapcast podcast with Mike Cooley and myself, Brad O'Brien. You can find me on the Twitbots at Zeta Base Z E T A B A S S. You can find me at Cooley with three O's C O O O. L-E-Y. Oh. If you guys haven't subscribed to us yet, do us a favor. Do yourself a favor. Click that subscribe or button. Seriously, so man, if you listen to it all the way to this point, we're worth your time. Damn it. Oh, that or you fell asleep. But either one, if we can help you sleep, dude, you <laughs> should subscribe to us. That stuff is really important. I will tell you what, neither of us are getting enough of it. <laughs> so if we're helping straight. you sleep, we ought to have a Patreon just for that. Let us know if we're <laughs> helping you sleep at night. That's right, man. Take care, guys. Have a great week. Spread the podcast and not the plague.